Good morning. Uh, welcome uh, to worship this morning. This is the uh, fifth uh, Sunday uh, after the Epiphany. Uh, just a few announcements before we begin our worship today. Um, how many of you saw one of these little blue cards in your bulletins this morning when you came in? Anybody have one of these blue cards? Maybe the first service took all of them. Nobody has any of these? All right, well, never mind. <laughs> Uh, Evansville Lutheran School uh, children filled out these little blue cards, or, or the different colors. Maybe they're different colors. Okay, thank you. I was wrong. Okay. Uh, they filled out these little cards to just offer words of encouragement uh, to our uh, congregation, and so we put these in the bulletins. If you have one of these uh, cards, uh, the, uh, be encouraged by the words from Evansville Lutheran School. If you didn't get one of these cards, don't be discouraged. Um, <laughs> The people who have a card will pass it to you at some point during the service, just so you can be encouraged. But we're just thankful for Evansville Lutheran School students who took the time uh, to try to offer words of encouragement to us as a congregation. Uh, a couple more announcements regarding uh, our worship services. Uh, we, uh, this is the fifth Sunday of Epiphany, as I mentioned. Next week will be Transfiguration Sunday, uh, which means we are into the season of Lent. A uh, week from this Wednesday... Uh, will be Ash Wednesday. You'll see um, information in your bulletin about Ash Wednesday services. Uh, we do offer uh, three times throughout the day if you'd like to come in for uh, imposition of ashes on the forehead uh, in the morning and the, uh, right around after that second, or the morning service as well, and then in the evening. You'll see those times uh, in the bulletin. And these are not formal services. You can just come in for uh, just a few moments uh, for prayer, uh, reading some scriptures, come forward and I will place the ashes on your forehead. So it doesn't take very long, uh, but if you're interested in that, please see the bulletin announcement of Ash Wednesday for those uh, times for the imposition. And then we have our Ash Wednesday worship services, which will start into our Lenten services. We have services at 10 in the morning as well as 6.30 in the evening. You can see the back page of the bulletin uh, for the theme uh, for those services as well as uh, the dates and times. A couple announcements uh, regarding some events coming up next weekend. Uh, next Saturday, uh, the members of our Chinese uh, ministry here uh, at St. Paul's are inviting us as a congregation uh, to join them and many other uh, Chinese from our community uh, for their annual uh, Chinese New Year uh, celebration that will be held in our gymnasium. Uh, that will start at 4 o'clock uh, with the show itself. Uh, I've been able to kind of sneak around and watch them practice. That's really kind of a cool uh, show that they'll have available for that time. So the show will start at five, 4 and then a potluck at uh, 5.30, and who doesn't like a good potluck? Uh, so we are invited uh, to join our, our Chinese uh, members and the Chinese community for this Chinese New Year celebration this coming Saturday uh, starting at 4. A week from today, um, our high school youth invite our congregation members, if you'd like, to join them for their annual Super Bowl party, which is held at five o'clock in the meeting rooms. We just ask everybody to bring a snack to be shared. I don't think there's any uh, vested interest in either team uh, really this, this year. I think it's really just more about the food, uh, the fun, the fellowship, and the commercials. Uh, so you're welcome to join us uh, next Sunday, uh, five o'clock in the meeting rooms. And that's the only announcements I have uh, this uh, morning. So once again, we give thanks that we can gather together and uh, the house of worship and receive God's good, good gifts uh, through his uh, word proclaimed. Uh, we begin our service with the ringing of the bells.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will sing to the Lord. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, her Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them out by name, by the greatness of his might and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even you shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted." But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But not of my own will, I am still entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many of who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. As many of you might know, uh, the uh, Summer Olympics um, are happening uh, this summer uh, in the uh, city of Paris. I'm assuming no one here is making the journey over to Paris for the Olympics, but uh, we, uh, in our family, especially uh, Patty and I, we love watching uh, the Olympic Games. We have for a number of years. We especially like the summer games. Uh, we will uh, sp- uh, spend a considerable amount of time uh, watching the gymnastics uh, and the swimming events and the volleyball. Occasionally we'll watch some of the soccer uh, matches. That's because our son played soccer. Uh, but uh, we'll watch these events. We'll pretty much watch any event for the most part, but we just really enjoy uh, watching the, the summer events, uh, summer Olympics, watching all those contests, all those events take place. Uh, and uh, there's somebody else who probably enjoyed uh, watching uh, the Olympics. The Apostle Paul Now, it doesn't say in the scripture uh, that Paul actually got to take in the Olympic Games as they were centered there in Athens, although he traveled to that area. It doesn't say that he necessarily took in the Olympic Games, uh, but it seems pretty clear that he probably attended uh, another type of athletic competition called the Ithmian Games. There was a a tract of land, a section of land uh, that connected Corinth and Greece. Uh, this kind of little peninsula, and this was the Ithmian Games would take place uh, right there on that uh, piece of parcel of land, these Ithmian Games. They would happen every two years, and we know from the book of Acts that the apostle Paul actually took up residence in Corinth uh, from the year 50 to 52, and the Ithmian Games took place right in that area in the year 51. So he was pretty familiar uh, with these uh, games. They're very similar uh, to the uh, Olympics. You kind of wonder, why would Paul uh, be there right at that time? Of course, it makes sense, doesn't it? That he would be right there when people are traveling from all over the place for these competitions, for these games. As people were coming to that narrow area of land around Corinth, he would want to set up uh, right there in the middle because he had more opportunities at that point to share the good news uh, with those who had gathered uh, for those festival uh, celebrations. The other thing was, uh, believe it or not, back in those days, they didn't have hotels. Uh, the Motel 6 didn't leave the light on uh, for all those travelers. And so those who would come to celebrate these games very often had to live out in the fields. They had to sleep out in the fields for the weeks of the, the games that took place. And interesting enough, Paul uh, had a trade, something that he did for a living. He was a tent maker. And so Paul and his friends Priscilla and Aquila, who were also tent makers, had the opportunity as all these fans were gathered for these games to set up these tents uh, in these fields for these uh, people gathered together and through that make contacts, make uh, connections to people to share the good news. Uh, But maybe he just went because he he liked the games. Uh, We see in our our reading today from 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul uses this athletic competition Uh, that everybody in Corinth was familiar with. He uses this uh, competition to kind of describe the Christian faith uh, here in uh, verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be uh, disqualified. He says, don't you know that everyone who competes, competes to win a prize? Now, in the Ithmian Games, they use uh, a lot of the same events and same activities that you would think of in terms of the Olympics. Of course, they had track and field games. They had long distance and short distance running. They had javelin. uh, They had discus. They had boxing. Uh, They had archery and all that stuff. But I was looking ahead. I was looking through some of the resources, some of the other things they had. They had chariot races. I don't think I've seen that ever before. Uh, Chariot races. And believe it or not, they actually had poetry, reading, and singing. Competitive poetry. Can you imagine that? Roses are red and violets are blue. Your poetry is lame. I'm better than you. I don't know what. I mean, competitive poetry. 
But regardless of the games, whether it was racing or throwing things or, or poetry or singing, they all competed uh, for the same idea. They wanted to win a prize. They wanted to be number one in their event. They wanted to, uh, to win a prize. Now, today's Olympics, uh, they break it down into gold and silver and bronze. Uh, but in those days, you only got first place and nothing else. They didn't have participation trophies back in those days. You win or you go home. So they would uh, compete for this uh, prize. And what was the prize? Well, it wasn't a gold medal. It was a, a crown of uh, leaves, laurel leaves. And actually, they're saying that in the Ithmian games, uh, this crown of leaves was actually made out of dried celery. Dried celery as a crown uh, for your victory. So instead of shouting, go for the gold, they were yelling, go for the greens. Uh, but... Uh, but it was still a, quite the honor to, to, to compete like that. Now, in this context, Paul is talking about a runner racing to achieve the crown. Now, you and I know, by God's grace, we have already been given the crown of victory. We have already stood upon the podium and been proclaimed victorious. But it has nothing to do with us at all. In athletic competitions, in these Olympic games, or Arithmian games, the, the one who would win, was, it was a result of their own work, their own efforts, what they had done to achieve uh, that milestone. But you and I know that that's not the case for us. We have victory, but it has nothing to do with us at all, because you and I know our sinful nature. When God would tell us to run the race this direction, our normal instinct would go off that direction uh, to do what we want to do. Uh, when God would say, as part of running this race, you should keep me first, we would tend to be distracted by the cares and concerns of this world. When God says, as you run this race, you should love your neighbor as yourself, you and I would kind of more than likely put our neighbors second. If it came down to us winning the race by the good things that we would do to keep God's law, we know that we would fail. But we have been granted victory. We stand upon the podium in triumph, and it has nothing to do with us at all. It has everything to do with what Christ has done. Jesus has run the race for us on our behalf. That race took him straight from heaven. He came into this world, took upon himself our flesh, and he ran that race of faith, and he ran it perfectly. He never strayed. He was never distracted by the cares and concerns of this world. He ran perfectly that race marked out for him. He kept God's law always in our place. And he ran perfectly. And that race that he ran perfectly led him to lift his hands in triumph. Actually, on a cross. Jesus, who ran the race perfectly, who kept God's law perfectly, willingly went to the cross. And on the cross, he experienced the agony of defeat, the agony of what our sins do, the separation from God, the separation from one another, the pain, the anguish, the suffering, the condemnation, the judgment, the hell, the agony of defeat Jesus experienced on the cross, not because he deserved it, but because we did. And Jesus suffered that agony of defeat so that by his death on the cross and by his resurrection victory from the grave, because of his death and resurrection, now our sins have been removed from us. He suffered the agony of defeat so we could experience the thrill and the joy of his victory over sin and death. And the Holy Spirit has taken that wonderful good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, that gospel message, and that Holy Spirit is the one who has brought us to faith. It's the Holy Spirit who has put us on this path that leads to salvation. And in those days, they would, in the Olympic days, they would try to win these medals or these wreaths or whatever uh, that would perish and spoil and eventually just fade away. But not so with you and I. By the Holy Spirit who has brought us to saving faith in Christ, we have been given a victory, a victory that lasts forever. We have been given a prize, the prize of forgiveness and salvation. And that will never be taken from us. 
because of what Christ has done for us. We have been given this victory in Christ, and yet Paul says, even though that victory is ours now, we're still running. We're still running the race of faith. And what does that look like for us as we run this race? And that's what Paul talks about in this, this verse. He talks about how we, uh, the athlete goes into self-discipline, into self-control as they compete. Whether an athlete or not, you understand what it takes uh, for an athlete to, to reach that high level, that pinnacle of their profession. All the hard work that it takes to achieve uh, where they need to be. I was reading an article about Michael Phelps, of course, probably one of the most you know, prestigious winners of all times. Michael Phelps would spend, uh, I didn't know he's a swimmer, by the way, and anyway, he would spend five hours a day in the pool, plus one to two hours before and after stretching, getting ready uh, to swim. And he would do that six days a week, every week, for however long it took. Talking about dedication. And the reason why athletes go through this, or if you can do it in any kind of competition, the reason why athletes do this is over and over again, going through the routines of the, of the competition, uh, training their bodies. We call that muscle memory. The more they do something over and over again, the more it becomes second nature. Their bodies don't have to think about it. Their bodies just do. And so an athlete will discipline their bodies. We'll practice some self-control to make sure their bodies are doing over and over again uh, what they need to be accomplished. It's something else that is part of that word, self-control. Um, the word self-control actually means to say no. Think about how many times an athlete, an Olympic athlete, or any other athlete has to say no <laughs> in their lives. No to those temptations that they might experience. Uh, when that alarm clock goes off at 4 o'clock in the morning, for that morning swim or that morning race, the temptation to just say, put the snooze button, but they say no to that. Or how many times do they have to say no to that, oh, that big greasy cheeseburger or that big old bucket of fries? How many times do they have to say no to those indulgences that could sabotage their workouts and sabotage their goals? How, how they have to say no over and over again to those things that would distract them away from what they're trying to accomplish. So discipline, doing the things that keeps the body doing what it needs to do, and self-control, avoiding those things that would get us off track. This is what Paul's talking about when he uses this analogy of the, these races and actually the boxing he talks about, boxing the air. As Christians, as we run this race marked out for us, we have to be disciplined, disciplined as disciples, we need to be about those things that will go over and over again to keep us in the faith. The Holy Spirit brings us to faith, and the Holy Spirit keeps us in the faith, and He uses very real, uh, specific ways to go about that. When you and I read the Holy Scriptures, Paul says in 2 Timothy that the Bible was written so that we could be trained for righteousness. When you and I read the Holy Scriptures, maybe that's just on our own, we pick up the Bible and we just read and we study and we pray through that. Or we, or we grab our, our husbands, our wives, our spouses, our children, and we, we look at the scriptures together. Or maybe it's a Christian friend or coming to formal Bible study. When we're immersed in that word over and over again, that trains our spiritual lives to be the people that God has called us to be. And as we're strengthening those spiritual muscles we're able to say no to the temptations of the flesh. We're better able to say no to those things that would lead us astray. As we're strengthening those spiritual muscles, as we're immersed in the Word, we're able to run with perseverance this race marked out for us. So God has given us His Word, but God has given us worship as well. When we gather and worship over and over again, that word is proclaimed and we're strengthened because we are running together. We're not running alone. We're running this race together. We're strengthened. We remember our baptisms in that baptismal water when Christ first gave us his victory over sin and death in that baptismal water. And when we stand at this altar, here's our victorious Savior who's given us his crucified and risen victorious body and blood. And the bread and the wine. You see, Jesus is right here with us. He runs alongside us. And through His Holy Spirit working through the Word, He strengthens our faith. He keeps us strong in faith. And He enables us to continue to run 
this race that's marked out for us in faith. The Apostle Paul says in his letter to uh, Titus, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. You and I are running this race we are already victorious. We are already Christ's champions because he has won the race for us. And we're running this race, and this race will not end. It doesn't even end in death, honestly. This race continues as we get ready for that last day. Paul says on that last day, our victorious champion, Jesus, will stand again upon this earth and our bodies raised from the grave. We will gather together and that will be a great big huge victory celebration. All of us having triumphed over sin and death because of what Christ has done for us to the cross and tomb. We are running perseverance this race marked out for us. And soon, the race will end at the finish line, and we will rejoice and celebrate with Christ and with one another. And as we run this race, Paul would remind us, we run as disciplined disciples. We run with our eyes on the prize, and we run with joy because Christ, thanks be to God, we have victory now and then. We have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We run this race, eyes on the prize. Amen. May the peace of God, which transcends all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus till life everlasting. Amen.
Please stand for prayer. Lord of light, in your mercy you raised up and sent faithful patriarchs and prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors to bear your name and life into all the world. Raise up and send forth pastors who will preach your word in purity and truth and will faithfully serve your people. Bless the men who are now studying at our seminaries in preparation for that time. You will call them for service in your kingdom, that being filled with your grace and mercy, they may have confidence and strength to proclaim your word of forgiveness to the people they will serve. We pray also that you would lead us to trust in you as we continue the process of calling another pastor to serve here among us. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Lord of light, you preached your word of grace and sent people free, to set people free from their sins, delivering them into your eternal kingdom of life and light. Give us faith, strength, and courage to confess your name and work around the world, within our nation, and among our friends and neighbors. In our confession, help us to speak clearly, earnestly, and truthfully that your word may accomplish the task for which it is sent. Preserve us from compromising your word of grace and truth. Grant us never to become weary in doing good. And give us humility to boast not in ourselves, but only in Christ our Lord. Bless our congregation, including Allie Cleaver, Sue Kaufman, Sarah Coleman, Drew Connor, and Diana Conrad and Corey. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light, you, you went into solitary places to pray for us and for our salvation and to implore our Father's guidance in your daily work and ministry. So teach us to pray that we may ask for those things that are beneficial for us, that are pleasing in your sight, and also that bless and benefit our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light, you healed the sick, cured the lame, gave sight to the blind, restored hearing to the deaf, and delivered those who were held in the bondage of the devil. According to your most gracious favor, heal those who suffer from any form of affliction in mind or body, including those who bear the crosses of chronic illness, unceasing pain, declining memory, progressing disease, and any other relentless affliction. And be with all those who are sick and hospitalized or recovering. We pray especially for Frank Rankowicz, Caleb Spicer, Mark Kell, Carolyn Sparks, Darlene Hatfield, Alan Goldie, Wayne Dyke, John Diekman, Jim Lance, Ruth Cook, Edna Fisher, Judy Fisher, Greg Hansen, Becky Kachanik, Jean Pogue, Jewel Mercer, Sue Kaufman, Bob Hoffman, Everett Lopez, Hannah Watkins, Larry and Karen Helming, April Davis, Chris Duncan, Reed Helmer, Natalie Cardin, Annette Turpin, and Bonnie Lingelson. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light, your radiant light of resurrection shines into the darkness of death and gives comfort to those who grieve the loss of loved ones, including the family and friends after the death of Greg Keck. May they look to you for peace and hope as they rejoice in the forgiveness of sins and the life everlasting granted to all who fall asleep in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we also lift before your throne of grace, Matt and Sarah Miller and family, after the death of their unborn child, Landon. Grant them a special measure of peace during this extremely difficult time. Surround them with family and friends as they walk through this valley together. May, the, may they trust in you and all your works and all your ways with all their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light, you give strength to the weary, courage to the faint of heart, and help to those who have no strength. Help those who suffer loss of work, loss of home, or any other calamity. Lift up those who sorrow because of life's hardships and disappointments. Grant your blessing to our food pantry recipients who have requested our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of light, by your light we entrust, you, entrust to you all for whom we pray, commending them to you in body and soul and all things. Bless and keep us according to your most gracious favor, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but us For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.